Hey what's going on gang, welcome to your fourth CSS tips and tricks tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you a cool way to create a CSS only drop down menu. Okay so first of all as always I've uploaded all of my course files to my github account and you can find them for this video in the CSS tips and tricks repository. I'm going to leave this link down below. What you need to do is make sure you're on the correct branch first of all, 04 CSS only drop down menu. The files are located inside this folder right here. So if you click on that, you're going to find some image files right here and the index and styles file as well. Okay, so that's the finished code. So let's get cracking on with the code. And by the way, I'm using Atom for my text editor and I've also got a package called Atom Live Server installed on this. This is gonna let me spin up a local server on port 3000 so I can preview uh, my index file in this browser, okay? So if you wanna do that, just install that. Then all you need to do is press Control Alt 3 and that's gonna spin up the server as well for you. Okay, so Inside this image folder, we just have two images. These are on my GitHub account, like I said. We have a closed icon. That's the burger nav for the uh, closed state of the menu. And we also have an open icon, which is a cross, which we're gonna click on to close the menu. So we're just gonna be using those two images. And yet, we could probably style these in CSS, but since this video is not about that, I'm just using images to speed it up, okay? So we also have an index file over here, and it's just basically a blanket index file at the minute. All I've done inside here is add a title and also a link to a style sheet over here on the left. We've not done anything in the body yet. This style sheet has in it just one rule at the minute. It styles the body and all we're doing is giving this a background color of a light gray, giving the whole page a font family of Arial, font weight of bold, a color of this kind of purpley shade and then a font size of 18 pixels, right? So the first thing I want to do now is start creating the HTML of this menu that we're going to create. So first of all, let's create some kind of surrounding element, some kind of wrapper element for this menu. So I'm going to create a div to do that. I'm going to give this a class equal to drop down menu, just like that. And this is going to surround the whole menu now. OK, so inside we need to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to actually add the menu content, the links, if you like. OK, so to do that, I'm going to create a div and I'm gonna give this a class equal to menu hyphen content. So this is gonna surround all of the different links and these links are gonna be displayed in an unordered list. So instead of me writing out all of these links, what I'm gonna do is just quickly paste them in instead. And as you can see, just a UL tag, series of LI tags and inside anchor tags with a home, about, store, contact and blog link. It doesn't really matter that they're not linking anywhere. So this is our menu content. What is going to be displayed in the menu when it is dropped down, when it shows, if you like, or when it's open. Now, the way we're going to do this using only CSS is by using an input and a label, right? So normally when we create some kind of drop down menu, when we click on a button to open it and close it, we'd use jQuery, JavaScript, or some other kind of library. Now, in this tutorial, we're not going to use any of that. All we're going to do is stick to CSS, and there's a really cool way we can kind of mimic this click event using CSS, and that is using an input field and a label. So, first of all, I'm going to create this input field, and I'm going to explain why we're using this in a minute. So, this input field is going to have a type equal to checkbox, right? And then we're going to give this an ID as well, equal to menu. Okay, so... Now we have this checkbox, we want a label as well. So I'll say label, and then it's gonna be four equals, and then it's gonna be equal to whatever ID we set here, all right? So this is a label, and we've spelled that incorrectly, a label for this particular checkbox, right? So when I type in now menu here, what this is gonna do is associate this label with this input. So if we click on this label, it's gonna check this box right because we've made this association right here so let's just give this some text inside the label i'm going to call this menu if i save this now we can view it over here we can see this checkbox and i'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see that this checkbox right here you can see when we click on the checkbox itself it checks it right and also when we click on the menu it checks it as well so we've made that association when we click on the label it checks the box and unchecks it all right so now that is all we need to do for the HTML. We just need to style this up now so that when we click on this, it opens this stuff 
when we click on it again it hides this stuff right so let's go to the styles.css to do that so the first thing I want to do is just style up this content first of all all right so let's just do some basic styles for this so we're going to target the drop down menu and then inside here what I'm going to do is give this a background of white just so it stands out a little bit from the gray background of the page so I'll say background is going to be FFF we're also going to give this some padding we'll say about 20 pixels all the way around we're also going to give this a border bottom so it's going to have like a thin strip of purple at the bottom so to say that I'll do border bottom it's going to be two pixels and solid and then finally it's going to be a hex code of 603D7B that's the same color as this text right here okay we're also going to give this a box shadow just so it jumps out from the page a little bit as well so I'll say box shadow it's going to be one pixel two pixels three pixels then we're going to give it a background of RGBA so we can use this alpha channel right here and give it some kind of opacity and it'll be black which is 000, zero and then 0 0.2 for the opacity okay so let's save that now we can see it stands out a little bit this menu from the page and we have this border at the bottom as well which is quite cool all right so by the way this is not going to be um, the greatest looking menu you're ever going to see but that's not the point of this tutorial i just want to show you this functionality of a drop down menu without using javascript so anyway now what i want to do is style up the ul a little bit so i'm going to copy this dude come down here and paste it in again and then we want to style the ul within it so this ul is going to have a list hyphen style hyphen type of none that is going to get rid of these little spots right here so we don't want those and we also want to remove the padding so we'll say padding is zero so if we save that now we get rid of the spots and we move everything left so it's flush to the side of the menu okay so the next thing i want to do is style up the links inside so again i'm going to paste this drop down menu in and say a for the links and inside this what we want to do is display them first of all as block so that we can say we want a padding of 10 pixels all the way around now and then we want to give this a text decoration of none which means it's going to remove that underline effect so if i save this now then it looks a bit better we're also going to color these the same color as this purple so i'm going to say color purple and now it looks something like that okay so the next thing we want to do is style up this thing right here because most menus aren't controlled by this kind of checkbox <laughs> they don't have a tick for open and then an untick for closed right you want some kind of image and we're going to use these images right here so this one which has a kind of burger icon in and then this one for when the menu is open so we click on this to close it again makes sense so that's what we're going to do we're going to use those two images and we're going to style this thing right here okay so the way we're going to do that is by coming down here and saying drop down menu and then the label first of all inside it we're going to display this as block first of all right so it becomes a block level element now we're also going to say cursor is going to be pointer which means when we hover over it it's going to have a hand instead of this little arrow okay so if i save it now you'll see that so you can see this little hand now when we hover over which says we can click it we're also going to give this a background image and it's going to be that closed icon so we'll say background is going to be url and inside we need to pass through the path to the image which is in the image folder forward slash closed dot png we're also going to say we don't want this to repeat so i'll say no hyphen repeat we only want to show this image once and it, we want it to be on the left and center up and down so if i save this now we can see this icon behind it right here but it still doesn't look quite right so what i want to do now is come down here and say padding is going to be and it's going to be 30 pixels for the top zero to the right 30 pixels to the bottom and then 80 pixels to the left that's going to give this image room to breathe so if i click save now we can see that image right there and it looks big because i'm zoomed in but if i restore this back to default it's a little smaller okay so there's our image for this menu icon right now we want to get rid of this thing right here we don't want that to show do it so let's now say input and then it has an id of menu and we're going to say display none 
right? But before I do that, if I click on this, remember this is the label. This is being checked, right? If I click it again, it's been unchecked. So even if we set this to display none, when we click this, it's being checked in the background and it's being unchecked when we click it again. So now we have this checked and unchecked state when we're clicking on this icon right here and we can use that state to style things differently, right? Because we can use a checked pseudo class to style something. So I'm gonna come down here and what I'm gonna do is create, first of all, a little comment, which is gonna to be toggle effect. So now what we can say is we want that input and we want to detect when it's checked, right? So this pseudo class of checked, which is a colon and then checked, is gonna apply when this input has a tick in it, when it's been checked or when we've clicked on this, right? Now we don't wanna style the actual input. What we wanna do is style this thing right here, okay? We want it to become a cross when it's open. So what I'm gonna do is use the general sibling selector. So that looks something like this. It's this little squiggly line, first of all, right? And then whatever the sibling selector is. So in our case, it's gonna be dots or rather just a label. So let me just go back to the HTML to explain this. So right here we have this input, right? And when it's checked, we're saying, okay, well, grab the input, then grab the general sibling, which is the label. And a general sibling will match up to anything that is on the same level as the original element. So you see like these two are on the same level, right? But this UL is not, but these are. This UL is nested one level deeper, but when we use the general sibling selector, we can say, okay, we wanna grab the input, use the general sibling selector to grab an element which is on the same level, which comes after the input, and then we can use a different selector for each one of these, so label or menu content, which is what we've done. We've done it for the label right here. Make sense? So now we're targeting this label and we're displaying it differently or styling it differently when the input box is checked or when this thing is clicked. Okay, so when this is checked, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna change the background image to the cross. So we'll say background is gonna be a URL, and this time it's image, and then forward slash open dot PNG. And then we also wanna set this to no repeat and left center for the position. So if I save this now, if I click this, it's gonna to turn to the cross, then it's gonna turn back to the Bergenav cross Bergenav and that is just because this input is being checked and then unchecked and it's being styled differently because we're using this pseudo class and the general sibling selector make sense cool so we also now want this to close and open so by default we want this closed right so to do that what we're going to have to do is come up here and at the top I'm just going to say menu hyphen content remember the menu content was this thing right here, which contains all the links. So by default, what I wanna do is give this a height of zero or a max hyphen height of zero, right? So if I do that and save it, then okay, the height of this is zero, but it's still showing these things. And that's because we have to set the overflow to hidden. So I'm gonna say now overflow is hidden. Then we don't see those things, right? And when we click on this, we get the cross, but we're still not showing the links. So now what I wanna do down here in the toggle effect is this time say input checked. So we're saying when the input is checked again, again, we're gonna use the general sibling selector, but this time we're gonna grab this general sibling right here, the menu content, it's still on the same level and it comes after the input so we can do that. So it's menu content. So let's go back to the styles and we'll say dot menu hyphen content. And this time what we wanna do is give this a max hyphen height of 100%. So we're saying it can be open, okay? It does have a height. So now when I click on this, it opens. When I click on it again, it closes. There we go. And you've got a fully functioning menu, which is drop down based on a click event. And we're not using any JavaScript whatsoever. So you can make this better. You could probably incorporate some kind of animation effect on this icon or the actual menu coming down. I'll leave you to have a play around with that. If you do have any good demos of what you've done, feel free to share the link down below. And if you enjoy these videos, my friends, please don't forget to share them, subscribe and like, and I'm gonna see you in the very next video.